My daughter got way too hammered and drove intoxicated, so I took away her car, but my husband is her drinking partner and gave her back the keys, so now I'm driving this marriage to the ground. Two days ago, my 20-year-old daughter drove drunk to get herself some food. I was working in the backyard and thought she was inside watching golf with her dad. When I realized she had driven after drinking that afternoon, I immediately got in my car, picked her up, and drove her home. She is supposed to be returning to college any day now to start an internship, and I am adamant that she cannot have the car anymore until she earns my trust back. She can fly back to college and once there, take Lyft, Uber, public transportation, whatever, just not her car, which is actually not her car as it was purchased for her by her dad. The problem is that her dad disagrees with me and wants her to have the car back. This is the same guy who called her while she was out driving drunk, and all he did was tell her to get home safely. He had been drinking that afternoon and was also in no condition to drive. She says she doesn't really remember what she said in the car after I picked her up, a further indication of her level of intoxication. Am I blowing this out of proportion for fighting her dad to not let her take her car back to college after this? Update 1. Behind my back, her dad, my soon-to-be ex, found her keys, helped her pack the car, and tried to get her on the road before I got home from work. My ring doorbell kept alerting me, so I eventually saw what was going on. I rushed home from work, blocked her car with my SUV, and called the cops. Before they could get there, he jumped into my car, fought me to turn off my car, and was able to prevent me from blocking her. My arm got scraped in the process of him fighting to turn off my car. Ultimately, he overpowered me, and she was able to drive off. The cops were too late, and off she went, six hours away to college, with her car. I wasn't really injured, so I declined to press charges against him, but I demanded that he leave and told him that our marriage is over. He's now staying elsewhere for an indefinite period. She's planning to go to AA, therapy, group meetings, get an accountability partner, a breathalyzer, and an ignition interlock. I hope she does all those things. I just wanted her to do them without her car because I don't trust her. Sadly, her dad and I are not on the same page. I feel incredibly betrayed by him for doing all this behind my back, for not communicating with me about his intentions to give her the car back, and for letting her have the car despite all the evidence showing that she can't be trusted with it. He says I'm overreacting, that they have a plan, and that he trusts her. I don't, I think he's a coward, and I pray that his cowardice and stupidity don't get her or anyone else unalived. I'm also wondering how to go about trying to stop someone from driving drunk when you're not physically with a potential drunk driver. Do the police actually do anything about it if you call them? Commenter. Really, your husband thinks it's okay to give your daughter her car back after she has shown she will drive drunk just to get food, let alone for parties every weekend at school? I would also make her take one of the courses the courts require drunk drivers to take. Your husband is a prick and my guess is that he was driving drunk at her age too. Ops response. Agreed, and he still does at age 58. In fact, he's golfing tonight with his golf buddies and, more often than not, he drives home drunk. No wonder my daughter gets it from him. For this and many other reasons, I'm done with this marriage. Update 2. This isn't much of an update but more so to add details about the events that happened in my last two posts. To summarize, last Sunday, my daughter drove drunk. Yes, drunk, hammered, wasted. She's on our home security footage slurring her words, telling her dad she shouldn't get him another drink because he's had too many. She's bumping into things, being obnoxious with her brother, and eventually goes out the front door, getting into the car she drives, and driving off to get food for herself. I was working in the backyard and thought she was watching golf with her dad. When I learned what she'd done and where she was, I picked her up and brought her home. Fast forward to Thursday. Her dad and I were supposed to come up with a plan about letting her have the car back when she went back to college. I was adamant that she shouldn't, but he seemed uncertain. She was desperate to have it, and while I was at work, her dad gave in to her. They hurried to pack her stuff and sneak her off to college, but when I became aware of what was going on, I left work and got home as soon as possible to try to stop her. Despite my not-so-stellar attempts to prevent her from driving off, she did. I was furious with my now-soon-to-be ex and told him to leave. He's been out of the house since. Again, more details are in my previous posts, but that's where things stand today. I guess I just want to give more details as to why I reacted the way I did and why I told my soon-to-be ex to leave that day. Five months ago, my daughter rolled her car and ended up stuck in some trees next to a creek. Supposedly, she hadn't been drinking that morning but had been the night before. While still trapped in the car, she crawled to the back seat to throw her bottle of not-quite-empty booze out the window. Obviously, she could have been unalived, but thank God, she only got a few scratches. Her car was totaled. I felt we should wait a bit before getting her another one to let the gravity of the situation sink in, but her dad disregarded my wishes, gave in to her, and less than two weeks later, she had another car. To clarify, it's not her car. She does not own the car. It was purchased using mine and her dad's finances, and her dad's name is on the title, I still don't know what the right thing was to do, but I know his complete disregard for what I want in terms of our children's well-being is absolutely intolerable to me anymore. We're not dealing with playdates or homework or curfews anymore. These are alive or unalive situations now, and we should do everything we can to try to be on the same page, 
not going behind each other's backs to get our own way. This time, though, I thought my soon-to-be ex was leaning towards not letting her have the car to take back to college. He said we would discuss it further and try to agree on a plan. That never happened. Instead, they went behind my back, quickly packed the car, and off she went. Maybe I am the jerk, maybe I handled it all wrong. All I can say is that I love my daughter and am terrified of losing her, one way or another, to booze. I can't stop her from drinking, but I was hoping to at least stop her from driving when she does drink, and since we're six hours away from each other, keeping the car seems the only surefire way to do that. Also, she admitted to me this wasn't the first time she's driven drunk. Thanks to my soon-to-be ex, it probably won't be the last. My marriage has been headed towards its end for years. I'm not divorcing him over this one incident. This was just the last straw. No relationship can survive chronic lying, zero respect, zero intimacy, zero connection, and chronic loneliness. I probably stayed longer than I should have. Commenter. I spoke about this in your last post as well, but here's my story. At 19 years old, I was woken up at 3 a.m. by my mom. She told me I had to wake up because the police were at the door about my dad, and they wouldn't talk to her because she had never married him. There were two of them, both men, and they sat me down on my sofa to tell me that my dad had been driving drunk and got into a car accident. My mom asked what hospital he was in, and these two officers, both of whom were barely older than me, had to look us both in the eye and say that he hadn't gone to the hospital because he had passed at the scene. The next day, there were pictures of my dad's smashed truck, including the destroyed front window he'd been ejected through and the blood on the back of the semi-trailer he'd crashed into, all over Facebook. My aunt drunkenly tried to show me and my mom these same photos two days after the accident while we were planning a memorial service and discussing arrangements that the funeral home insisted I be present for as his next of kin. I still remember those photos, the text above them talking about the damage that the person who called 911 had seen to my dad's body, and having to block multiple members of my family and my dad's former drunk friends if they reached out to me to give me closure. Holding your daughter accountable is in her best interest. You don't want anyone's last memory of her to be pictures of a smash car and a blood smear.